Hello and welcome to a slightly different type of video. In this video, we'll be talking about how to create your own HDRI environment masks. So the way that this video series is going to be kind of broken down is this is going to be a kind of general how to capture and edit your HDRI images. And then we'll start looking at use cases from Spark AR to Blender to other programs further down the line. So the first thing uh, to sort of note is the way I'm going to show you is for the cameras I have access to. So in my case, I actually have access to a 360 camera. So the 360 footage you're going to see and the images you're going to see in this uh, video will be using the Insta360 ONE R. And this camera here is capable of HDRI or HDR, sorry. Uh, and you need a camera that is capable of HDR as an option and also one that allows you to adjust the brackets or capture multiple brackets, ideally. So the Insta360 One Insta R allows me to basically capture about um, four brackets or three brackets and zero. Uh, but ideally, you'd want a camera that can capture between seven and 11, as we'll kind of touch on later. You can also create a HDR image using a standard DSLR camera. Um, but the process is a little bit more convoluted by the fact that you'd have to stitch together the images in a photo stitching program. You can do this in Photoshop, uh, but again, you need to make sure that everything stays the same and you need to adjust the EV levels um, and nothing else. And obviously things like focus and everything needs to be kept clean and crisp across the board. But this will be basically looking at how we do it with uh, 360 cameras and all the files and some environment maps that I've captured using my 360 camera will be made available to my Patreons um, down in the link below. And I'll try and keep adding to that over time just to try and give you more scope and things to play about with. Uh, an excellent resource I'm gonna just cover now before we get into the process and workflow is HDRI Haven. It is a quite a good resource for free HDRI images if you're kind of struggling to source any. So I'm just now going to move into the tutorial and I'll see you again at the very end. Okay, so as we're sort of saying, HDRIs are very useful for visual effect workflows. They kind of capture the light of the space or the scene um, at different brackets. So that way when we've got things like plastic or metal or anything that kind of takes on the properties or reflective um, values that we want to try and carry across, a HDRI image or environment map is required. So what you can see on screen now is a 360 image that I took of a TV studio at the university where I work. And the fact, way that this image was actually captured, and I'll just quickly show you now and see if I can open these up in preview. So this is the three images it took. So I kept my camera on HDR, HDR settings and it took it at three different brackets. Ideally, you would want seven or 11 or as many as possible, just so you can get more range and so you can get a bit more accuracy. Uh, bear in mind, obviously, the better your camera is in terms of dealing with darkness and removing noise, the probably the cleaner and crisper your environment map would be. So here we have a low EV level where the sort of light is quite dark or it sort of took away the light, uh, darkness and just kept the light. Um, and again, you can sort of see the different sort of brackets we're dealing with here. So the process I have to follow using my 360 camera is the camera itself actually stitches the images for me and takes those three images at the same time. But I actually can't work with them as they are. I actually need to go through an additional few steps. So this process will vary depending on which 360 camera you're using. Uh, this process I'm following here will work for the Insta360 ONE R, uh, the Insta360 ONE X and some of the other brands out there. So I'm just going to open up the Insta360 Studio, up like so, and I'm just going to uh, start from scratch. So when I launch up the application, it's going to ask me to drag and drop the footage in. Now, I can't just drag in the free INSP, which is the format that the Insta360 works with. We actually need to bring them all in as one. If we try and bring them in individually, it causes some issues. So if I just quickly show you the file structure I mean, when I go to my uh, raw files, 
So when I'm working with the raw files that my camera is generating, I basically create these three .imsp formats. This is a kind of Insta360's own version of a kind of raw or TIFF format essentially, um, but we can't work with those in most programs. We need to convert these into a format that other programs will recognize, whether that's EXR or .hdr, um, or even in some cases .tiff, depending on the engine or program we're working with. So I'm going to need to convert these .insps into .jpegs, and then from .jpegs into a .hdr, that is, they're more merged together. So how do I go about doing that? Well, with the Insta360 Studio open, I'm going to go to the little plus button at the top. I'm going to navigate to my three .insp files, and I'm just going to select all three of them and hit open. And by doing it this way, it should ensure that it brings them in as this one HDR file. Now, bear in mind, you need your camera to be set to be HDR recording or HDR photo taking for this to work. So with our HDR image generated, we can see our three different uh, brackets down here. I'm just gonna click on the HDR file and then hit export. We want to make sure the export type is set to be HDR photo or HDR video, depending on which uh, way you're working. I'm just going to hit OK. And it's just going to export that for me. Like so. So I've done this a few times already. So I will have a few duplicates. But it will create a folder. And in that folder, I will have the three brackets uh, that I saw before. So my uh, sort of normal dark and overexposed, but it also generates this fourth one, which is a merged one, which is basically all those brackets put together into one JPEG. We still can't use any of these for formats uh, for, um, for example, Spark or Blender. We do need to go one step further. So the program I'm going to do this with is Photoshop. You could do this with Lightroom and there are a variety of other freeware out there that would allow you to do that to do to merge these into one .hdr file. I'm using Photoshop because I have access to it, basically. So I'm going to open up Photoshop. I'm just going to start from scratch. I'm going to go to File, Automate, Merge to HDR Pro. This will bring up a little dialog box that will ask you to choose your files. So I'm going to choose the files and go to Browse. Navigate to my folder where those, free, those uh, JPEGs were created. I'm going to select all four of them in this case because the merged one will basically be a zero. Hit open. Uh, automatic, click the attempt to automatically align source images to make sure that they all get lined up correctly. And again, this is why I'm saying if you're doing this, you ideally need to take them all at the same time or have a camera that can do multiple brackets in one go. Otherwise, if something changes in your scene, it won't necessarily work. So I'm just going to hit OK. And it'll now create new layers for all of these images and then bring up a new dialog box, like so. So we have our EV plus 2.10, plus 0.9, and negative 1.91 alongside our merged image, which is at EV0. I need to make sure that the mode is set to 32 bit. If it's at anything lower than 32 bit, uh, it won't allow us to save as a HDR format or as a um, format we can use for HDRI manipulation. So 32 bit mode enabled. We don't want to have complete toning in Adobe Raw. We don't want that on, so we just tick that off. Hit OK. This will now create us a merged file. So it will open up the folder again. So we now have this one image. But this one image now is, uh, gives us the option to actually save this as a HDR, which if we tried to save it as before, it wouldn't, get, wouldn't be there, basically. So with this now generated, uh, there's one extra step I'm going to have to need to do. So uh, for certain programs, for example, Spark, which uh, we'll be looking at in another video, uh, we need to adjust the size of this image because certain programs can't deal with 360 images or panoramic images that's beyond a certain dimension. So with my image selected, I'm going to go to image, image size, make sure I'm on pixels, and I'm going to adjust the value to be 4096, 
by 2048 pixels. I'm not going to worry about anything else, I'm going to keep everything else as is. Hit OK. I'm now going to go to File, Save As. And if everything has been done correctly up to this point, when we go to Format, drop down, we should have some options that aren't normally available to us. So you'll notice that we have our Photoshop file, but we also now have Open EXR, Photoshop Raw, Radiance and TIFF. We want Radiance. So I'm going to click on Radiance. This will now give us this .hdr moniker. And what this now means is it's going to keep those EV levels in there that we can now play about with and reach in other programs. But it's going to keep them in that one format that now more programs will be able to recognize. I'm just going to save this as TV Studio A. Hit save. There we go. And now if I go back to my desktop and I open up this image, I should have my HDR I image ready that I can now use in other programs. So this can now be used for reflective services or for kind of um, the light mass data that we could get from it essentially. So from this point on, we're now going to look at how we can take this HDR image and use it in a variety of programs. So there might be some extra little steps and we might have to go back a few steps depending on which program we're using. Um, and like I said, I'm working with the sort of solution that I have access to a 360 camera so it made my life a lot easier. Um, and as I also said, if you need HDRI images, there are plenty of resources out there, such as HDRI Haven. Um, it's again, just making sure you get the right dimensions and the right format for the program you're dealing with. And ideally, the more brackets you can, do, you can have in that image, the more playroom you've got, the more wiggle space you get, essentially. So I've been Stephen Fisher. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and continue watching to see how we can use this in a variety of programs. See you again soon. Goodbye.